Hey everybody, it's Alika Lifty, and today let's brew a Clever Dripper. This is a really versatile brew method. Um, I see it wax and wane as far as popularity for both home brewers and professionals. I like this versatility. Uh, this was my first pour over method at home. It was uh, Dylan Siemens, it was Mark Michelson's. A ton of people uh, got started with this brewer uh, because it's so versatile, because it's so easy to use. So. My recipe today is gonna to be a little non-traditional, but I'm also going to give you some options as far as no scale and as far as um, no gooseneck kettle. And uh, yeah, it'll just make it that much easier. Um, it's a brewer that sometimes gets complicated, but I think simple is um, often best with this brewer. Uh, some of the benefits of it, it's an immersion drip brewer. So we're soaking grounds with our water and what that can do is it's going to give us more sweetness, more body or texture in our cup. Uh, some of the pitfalls though is it um, that drained release can choke or clog your filter and hinder that final drain time, extending it and over extracting your coffee, getting you more uh, bitterness and dryness than you want in the cup. And so sometimes we grind too coarse for this brewer. It drains um, faster or in a reasonable time, but we actually need more steep time because of those large grounds. So my recipe today, we're gonna grind finer, um, we're gonna brew faster and we're not gonna choke. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, what I expect coffees to do in this brewer, I expect more uh, developed sweetness to come through. So more browned sugar sweetness, uh, more honeys. Um, if it says cane sugar, I expect more panela. I expect a deeper sweetness coming through because of the addition of more texture and more sugars extracting during this phase. So expect less complexity, um, but we can get really excellent balanced cups of coffee from the Clever Dripper. Um, so let's get started. What we're gonna need is our Clever Dripper. I like to keep the lid as well. I've got a decanter that can fit 400 milliliters or 14 ounces of water. I've got a mug, coffee grinder, coffee, number four paper filters. Um, I like the bleached filters because they have less paper taste uh, without the flavor holes in them because that's gonna let through more grit, more grime. That's gonna muddle our palate, muddle our flavor. Um, and you don't need a gooseneck kettle. I'm just using this tea kettle. It's set to 208 degrees Fahrenheit or just off boiling if you are um, at elevation and can't get that hot. Just under boiling is our target for right here. I've got a gram scale, I've got a timer. We're gonna want that. And I'm gonna be using an AeroPress paddle, but you could use a cupping spoon, a soup spoon, just anything with a wide flat portion that you can use to push large amounts of grounds underneath the water. All right, so first things first, any filter with perforations needs to be folded. So I'm gonna fold along the bottom, fold along the side of my number four, and I'm going to place this inside of my Clever Dripper. Another one of those pitfalls of this dripper is paper taste. Because we're steeping coffee in a brewer with a filter, a paper filter, it's just sitting there in paper for a long time. So. I'm gonna fill this brewer up about halfway. Give it a little swirl, make sure that water soaks the entirety of the paper. I'm gonna put my lid on it. Let this get hot. Let it, um, these paper fibers expand and increase their filtration. We're going to need 25 grams of medium finely ground coffee. This is about like a, um, a coarse table salt. This is 14 on a Barazza Encore. It's one on a fellow Ode grinder and it's 24 clicks on a Commandante C40. This is uh, almost what I would start with for a Kalita Wave. So think closer to your pour over grind size for these coffees. Once this feels hot, dump all that water, get your paddle ready, get your coffee ready, get your scale on, your timer ready to go. Let all that water drain through. You shouldn't need to refill your kettle. 
All right, water's dumped. Now, first thing I'm gonna do, let's tear your scale, get everything zeroed. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add 400 grams of water. As quickly as you can, we wanna maintain that heat. So 400 grams of water. Now, I'm gonna dump this coffee. Start in the middle. It's gonna form a layer on top of your water. Start your timer. And now from here, I'm gonna use this flat portion. Try to push the largest portions of this pile underneath. And we're going to stir this, saturating all of these grounds up to 30 seconds. So make sure there's no clumps. Make sure there's not floating islands of grounds on this foam. Try to push all the grounds underneath the water. So I'm not agitating a ton. I'm just making sure everything is wet. There at 30 seconds. Let's add our lid. Adding our water first um, helps to prevent choking. Because when we add our coffee first, we've got a bed of coffee. We add water to it. That force pushes fine coffee particles into our filter and clogs the sides of it. But adding our water first prevents that um, discharge. At one minute, I've got a nice foam of grounds there at the top, so I'm gonna push those back underneath again. I'm trying to push all of the coffee, even the coffee stuck to the sides of the filter, underneath the water, because it's almost time to start our drain. So there we go, that was pretty good. Got most of our grounds. Love that ride. We should be pretty close to a minute and a half, and this is our, our uh, finish point. At a minute and a half, all the way to the bottom. Four quick stirs. And now it's time to drain. So we should have our Clever Dripper on our decanter by a minute and 40 seconds. We just had a few um, minimal moments of manual agitation. We're gonna let this finer grind do most of our extracting for us. And that water first method to prevent the clogging of our filter. We should drain between two and a half to three minutes, which is pretty fast for a Clever Dripper. But because we can grind finer and we added some manual agitation, we've achieved our target extraction. This should get you the same strength as your traditional drip coffee. Um, if you're measuring that, this should be between 1.35 and 1.4 TDS, which is our standard drip coffee for a one to 16 ratio. If we grind too coarse and this drips through before two and a half minutes, you're gonna have a weaker body. Um, it might even taste papery, but uh, we'll lose body, we'll lose sweetness. If it drains longer than three minutes, we could get more drying um, and more bitterness than we really want from this coffee. But when we drain in our target range with most coffees, um, as always, we're gonna taste and see how this coffee acts with that extraction. Um, but we're gonna get heavier, slicker uh, texture, more body with this recipe. Uh, we're, we can still get nice acidity with this drip method, um, but it's gonna accentuate the body, it's gonna accentuate the sweetness, um, so fine coffees that have a nice acidity. Uh, and this is really fun to experiment with. You can taste what different temperatures of water are going to do under the same parameters, what different grind sizes are going to do, what different steep times are going to do. Um, it's a really great way to understand what is happening to your coffee. And as always, serve and enjoy.